Hello, welcome to my garden. Um, my name's Annette and um, for my work I'm a freelance learning consultant. So I work with museums to help them to do science learning. What I much more enjoy is what I do the rest of the time, which is to be an amateur moth recorder. So I'm really, really fascinated with moths and have been for about four years since a friend loaned me a moth trap when I was too ill to go out bird watching. And I suddenly realised there were all these amazing animals flying around in the dark in my back garden that I had no idea existed. I mean, who wouldn't be into moths if you could see things like this in your garden? This is an elephant hawk moth. It turned up in my moth trap this morning, so it was flying around last night. And it's brand new. Can you see it? absolutely fresh and beautiful there's no scales missing off its body really 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 shiny and it's just started it's just emerged from its pupa probably in the last 24 hours and it's been off looking for a mate and then it'll go to its food plant which is something like rose bay willow herb they like and also fuchsias which you might have in your garden so who knows you could have these in your garden too so what we're going to do in this film hopefully is show you a little bit more about finding out about moths um, a little bit about moth trapping with lights and some other ways to find moths if you don't have a moth trap or access to one. You don't need one to see moths because there are moths that fly during the day too. And generally just introduce you to all things mothy and good. So moth trapping, what, why? So why first? Moth trapping basically lets us see these amazing animals that we only really see by running a bright light in our gardens at night. Um, they will fly to light, nobody's quite sure why. There's lots of, sort of theories about that and scientists have done research to look at if they kind of maybe think that a moth trap is the moon and that's how they navigate or navigating via lights in another way. But at the end of the day, nobody's particularly sure. But what we do know is that running a light trap is one of the best ways to see adult moths um, and find out what's on the wing in your garden at night. And actually, if you do try it, you will be surprised and possibly find it quite remarkable. There's about two and a half thousand different species of native moths in the UK. Some of them are quite big, most of them are quite tiny, but all of them are really, really interesting and can tell us a lot about the biodiversity of the area that you live in. And we have to remember that moths themselves are really important food for bats and for amphibians and caterpillars, so the larvae of moths as well as butterflies, are really, really important foods for a lot of birds and again for um, other uh, insects and for um, amphibians too. So really, really important food. And if you know what the sort of like the lower parts of your food chain, like the insects like moths are doing, that gives you some idea about how the animals higher up the food chain are doing too. So it's important to know. And every garden is a little bit different because every garden is its own little ecosystem. And moth trapping is just another way to sort of like show how many species are in your garden. So let's have a look at a moth trap. So this is a moth trap. It's like a big expensive bucket. I think somebody ex ex uh, described it as on spring watch the other night. So a moth trap works like this. You have a big bucket. I put a cloth in the bottom to stop things getting wet. We fill it up with egg, egg boxes. And that's where the moths that fly in can kind of hide. So they like to fly to light, but then they like to kind of hide from it. Again, not quite sure why, but that's what they do. And that keeps them nice and safe till morning. Because what we don't want is for the moths to be attracted to the light and then just hang out and for a bird to come down at dawn before I manage to get out of bed and then just eat them all up. And birds do get into moth traps, but we try and stop them from doing that as much as we can. So you've got a nice collar on it and that, that helps the light be able to see what's inside the moth trap. It also keeps the, the, the animals that are inside bathed in a nice light. And here we have the business end of it. This is a mercury vapour bulb. And it's quite a special bulb. It's very bright light but it's got quite a lot of a UV to it because it's got mercury vapour inside the bulb, hence the name. Not very nice stuff, but it's fine when it's contained in a bulb and safely used. Um, that emits quite a lot of ultraviolet, which is the sort of like beyond the blue end of the spectrum. So we can't see it, but lots and lots of animals can. And moths seem to, seem to like that, as do many other insects. And the theory goes that give a moth a nice bright light. Here's my stunt moth borrowed from my cat. They will sort of be fluttering around and they can be flying quite high up or they might be flying in the garden we're not quite sure where most of the moths are coming from around here but i know full well that they come over the roof sometimes they'll fly in and they'll be distracted by the light and sometimes they'll just settle near the light quite often i find them here i run a sheet at the back of my moth trap as well because some just like to hang out on the sheet so it bathes in light and it's quite nice and safe but a lot of them will fly around a bit and then dive into the moth trap and I'll find them there next morning, perfectly safe. And then I can catalogue them, identify them and then release them. 
So all perfectly safe for the moths, and that means the birds can't get them either, which I think is pretty good. Okay, so we had a look at the, uh, the mercury vapour trap. This is a slightly different sort of trap. Um, this is a different lamp. These are called actinic lamps. And so these, again, um, emit quite a lot, quite a sort of um, a blue ultraviolet sort of light, but without the mercury vapour, this is a much, much safer. And these run cold, but they're not nearly so bright. And so there's lots of theories amongst moth trappers that this sort of lamp brings in different sorts of moths. And I'm actually running both of my moth traps next to each other quite a lot this year, hence using a bucket, because normally this would sit in the same proper moth trap base as, um, as the mercury vapour bulb does. Just to see if we get different moths in this trap, the same moths in this trap, whether we get anything seeming to prefer the, this trap to that trap. I don't think the science will be very conclusive, but it's been a really interesting experiment to try do during lockdown while I've had the time to do it. Um, and again, I'm running it exactly the same way. Um, this doesn't put such light, a lot of light out. It, it makes a nice bluey sort of purple glow, but the moths do seem to like it. And again, we've got a bucket here with some egg boxes in that they can fly into safely so I can find them and catalogue them at dawn. So most nights when I run my moth traps, the light traps, uh, the last thing I do before I go to bed is just to sort of go outside, have a quick wander around the garden and have a little bit of a look. Um, just to see if there's anything flown in early. Um, usually where I live, there's quite a lot of street lights and houses have their lights on as well, so light pollution. And it means that the moths around here don't really seem to fly into the trap, you know, before midnight when it starts to get properly dark, especially this time of year. But you never know. And there are certain species that fly quite early in the night. So it's always worth going and having a look to see what we can find. So I've got my essential kit. So I have got a pair of very attractive safety glasses because remember, moth traps emit quite a lot of ultraviolet light, which isn't great for your eyes. So I always wear safety goggles when I'm moth trapping. I'll just take those off for a second. Uh, next important bit of kit is a paintbrush. That's to help carefully dislodge any moths that might be on the outside of the trap or on a fence from the wall or on the ground around the trap. And I've got, very optimistically, a bag full of moth pots, which I'm going to take out with me as well, and a torch. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually quite a bright moon tonight. It's not full moon, but the bigger the moon gets and the clearer it is, the less luck we generally have with moths. So nobody's quite sure about why. There's lots and lots of theories to that. Maybe we'll discuss that at another point. But anyway, let's go and see what we can find. Oh, here's a moth. It's actually a moth. Can you see that fluttering? Fantastic. So this is um, my main moth trap, which I quite often run in the other part of the garden. But I run it here once a week for a moth recording programme called Garden Moth Scheme. And if you're interested in finding a bit more about that, do get in touch. And here's a hedgehog. Hello, hedgehog. So it's a great way to see nocturnal wildlife you wouldn't otherwise see. Sometimes I see bats coming in to eat the moths that are after <laughs> that I'm trying to trap. They do sort of see uh, moth traps as a bit of a honey pot, or you can eat buffet. Um, or you like bats too, they've got to eat. Yeah, let's go and have a bit of a look. Oh, that's fab. So, on the edge of the trap here, on the outside, we've got a bright yellow moth. This is a brimstone moth, not to be confused with the brimstone butterfly. It's smaller, but can you see, it's not a brown moth. And that was a little micro moth just flying away. It's one of the longhorns, so hopefully we'll see that tomorrow because they're fabulous. So we've actually got some moths flying around. Oh, and here's another one. This is, now these, these are my nemeses. This is a group of moths called pugs. So they're small and brown and quite, quite fascinating because they all look just about the same. But there are some very good mothers <laughs> who know the difference between all of them. I'm not quite there yet. I've only been doing this for a few years, but I'm learning and it is very fascinating and very, very addictive. There's not a huge amount flying around tonight, but there are a few flies and there's obviously that lovely bright yellow brimstone moth hanging out on the trap, which means there are a few moths flying as there always are this time of year. It's a great time of year for mothing. Um, so hopefully there'll be a few more for us to have a look at tomorrow morning. Um, and yeah, on that note, good night. So it's quarter to five. Um, it's pretty chilly this morning actually. Um, one of the reasons I've had to get up quite so early is um, to try to beat the birds. It's a moth trap. Um, it's not 100% light yet, as you can hear it's quite noisy birds around and there's Robin was just on bird feeder a second ago when I came out. So um, 
sometimes they're more discussed around on the ground. If I hang a sheet up or put a sheet down on the ground here, which I haven't today because the pigeons keep pooing on it, um, it's uh, sometimes it becomes a bit of a kind of instant buffet. So the best thing is to sort of get up before it gets light properly and try and sort of like keep the bird catches to a minimum. So I'm going to close the trap up and um, we'll see you later what we've got. That is totally what you want to find in the morning. Lovely, lovely elephant hawk moth. Okay, so I've um, got the moth trap here. So I closed this off um, and took the light out and moved it to a nice, safe, cool place. At about quarter to five this morning, that's why I'm a bit croaky this morning, <laughs> um, we're going to have a look inside. So inside are some of the things that were flying around last night and we're just going to find out what it is. Every time you open up a moth trap, you've got no idea what you're going to find inside. It might be nothing, it might be loads. So probably things are going to fly out and there's all sorts of things in there. It's not just moths that fly through a moth light. There's other flies and all sorts of flying insects as well. Ooh, so on here we've got tiny little tortrix. That's a type of micro moth. So that's the dominant number of species that we've got in the UK. And I'm not even going to try and show off by knowing what that one is. So I'm going to put that one in a pot and keep it safely so I can photograph it a little bit later. So gently ease it into a pot and it'll be absolutely fine in there as long as I keep it nice and safe and cool. That's what I do because you know, I'm not an expert, I've only been doing this for a few years and I'm still constantly learning. Um, so it's always really helpful to be able to ask other people's opinions by photographing them. Here's one that I do know. This is another moth that's just started flying. These fly in the sort of the early, the sort of the late spring, early summer. This is called a common swift. You can see it's shaking a little bit, hopefully. And um, that's warming up its wings to fly off. So these are quite primitive moths. I sort of, they're one of the, the sort of the oldest oh. types of species. They do tickle. You see he's got little short stubby antennae. This is a male and the males quite often have little sticky out abdomens. So have a look inside the trap. So what we've got are a bunch of egg boxes which we, you saw how we arranged and the moths just sort of like to hide inside there. There goes something. I'm just going to take one egg box out at a time and see what we've got inside. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is the start of an army arriving. This is a moth called Large Yellow Underwing. Let's see if we can get that in the light. There we go, it's a little bit of a better view. It's probably just been having fun. Oh, and we've got a pug moth. And that's off as well. I think that was probably a common pug, but I'm really not very good at them. And I do have another one identical to that that I potted this morning. Sometimes you go through all the egg boxes and there's just a massive moth at the bottom. There's a tiny little micro here. Now I'm not very good on micro moths. That's one that you, I can get down to species, genus level rather, sorry, and that's called Mompha. Now last night when I was filming before I went to bed, I saw something flying about and I thought it was probably one of these. Isn't that an extraordinary moth? One of the things that attracted me to moths in the first place is just their extraordinary range of adaptations, the way they disguise themselves as bits of leaf, bits of twig, and in the case of this one, a wood chip, like a woodpecker would peck out of a tree. Um, so just basically to hide during the day because obviously they're very, very important food for birds and all sorts of other animals. That's when they're flying at night and birds during the day. Um, and this is a moth called a pale prominent. They're extraordinary things my thumb there. Amazingly they, they just yeah the way they ravel their ring their wings up inside. <laughs> moths are just so diverse and amazing. Certain moths just really like to sit nice and still and vertically so I always tend to put those ones on a stick in a larger jar rather than a smaller pot. Cool. Let's see what we've got in here. So this is the other trap. This is the one that I ran with the actinic bulbs in a very, very stylish bucket. Ooh, oh, cool. And this is another little brown moth. This one's called treble lines. You can maybe just map, make out that it's got three lines across it in its wings. And that's another moth that's really quite common and quite a frequent visitor to traps this time of year. 
one of the other like, interesting things about moths is they have this amazing rhythm um, throughout the year. You can almost work out where you are in the year if you didn't have a calendar and didn't know what day it was by the moths that you were trapping. Like many other things in nature, lots of moths that have traditionally flown at certain times of year are starting to arrive a little bit earlier now because of the way the climate's changing. You see they've got lovely white petticoats. <laughs> so their underwings are quite white, but it's like a colour flash which can help deter a predator, or at least fox a predator to think, oh, where did that go? And it becomes a leaf again. These guys have got quite a cool monobrow. I don't know if you can see that. That's one of the ways that you can tell these from another similar species. So that's one of the other things with moths. Some of them do look quite samey. That's part of the challenge of starting to record them. So these little dudes are called heart and dart. You can see there's a little bit of difference between them size and where they hold their wings. And it's one of the most things you start to get to sort of see the individuals within the species and look at the variation. If you ever do run a moth trap, you should always look carefully. Now, I did look quite carefully quite early this morning, but I didn't look carefully enough. Just look what I've just spotted. It's a buff tip. It is one of the best moths. It comes disguised as a twig. So it's not really using its um, colour adaptations and it's disguised to its best ability. But what it does is just sit still during the day and pretends to be twig. And it's doing pretty well because the blackbird hasn't found it and we're well into the afternoon now. You don't necessarily need to use a moth trap to find signs of moth activity in your garden. This is our garden. Um, you can look for moths flying during the day. There are lots of species of day flying moths. I think there's something like 50. I'll need to check that figure at some point. And they come to lots and lots of flowers that uh, bees and other pollinators use. But one thing I found when I was looking um, at our nettle patch the other night was actually we've got probably some signs of some caterpillars, high, uh, caterpillars pupating inside the nettles. So I'm just going to put my nettle gloves on because they really do sting and it does itch. And we're going to have a look at these little structures. So I found these. And if you look closely, it's like something has rolled a cigar from the nettle. And if you look carefully there, can you see there's very, very, ouch, stung, very, very fine strands of silk in there. And I think that is where a moth larva or a caterpillar, or possibly a butterfly larva, I'm not sure, has um, gone to pupate. And a lot of moths and butterflies and some beetles make this sort of structure so they can go from their larval stage, their sort of caterpillar or larva, um, into their adult stage. And I did have a bit of a look. One of these had sprung open down here because I had a bit of a look inside just to see what was going on and if you look closely I'll just pull this leaf off because there's nothing there anymore and you see inside the telltale signs please don't pull them apart what we can see is we've got some silk here where it's spun its sort of web to protect itself and hold itself in place and all of this black stuff here is frass also known as caterpillar poo so that's a sign that a caterpillar has pupated and then emerged as a, a moth or a butterfly, not sure which, um, at some point in the last few days. It obviously nibbled its way out or broken its way out through the end of the nettle, which was open. I could see inside so I could check there was no caterpillar in there. So that's pretty cool. So I don't know what's in here, as I say. It could be a moth and there's a moth which is um, known to be sort of uh, pupating this sort of time of year called a mother of pearl which is a really beautiful, it's a, it's a micromoth, but it's quite a large micromoth, so it's, it's quite a commonly seen one. And often if you go on a walk and you go through nettles in a damp place, nettles and sort of some flowering plants, you, they, they're moths that will sort of fly out at you. The alternative is it could be a red admiral butterfly. They do a sim similar sort of thing. I suspect here it's a mother of pearl moth because we get a lot of them in this garden. And I know that from running my light trap for the last few years. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a little experiment and find out. So I have converted my butterfly net into a bag so I took it off the frame and I'm just gonna I've put some um, some metal post a metal thingy and a, um, a stake in place and I'm just gonna pop this over there just to see if we can trap whatever emerges from some of the, the sort of the rolls on this nettle. I'm just gonna tuck that in there. 
inside. Got the easiest thing, so I didn't put a long enough cord through the, through the net. But hopefully this way, if I come and check it every morning and every evening, we should at some point get to find out what's in all these nettle rolls in this nettle without harming the moth in any way at all. So I'm going to secure that around the bottom and hopefully when the moths or butterflies, whatever is in those nettle rolls emerges, I'll see it perched on this stake or on the side of the net and I'll be able to actually find out what it is. This moth is busy nectaring. Not all moths feed, but most of the macro moths in the UK do. There are quite a lot of species that don't too, but this is one that does. You can see its tongue going in and out of the flower. They really like Buddleia, like lots of other pollinators, because moths are important pollinators too. Um, especially of um, flowers that um, bloom at night. So if you have things like night scented stock or Nicotiana or evening primrose and ivy, ivy flowers in the autumn especially are really really important food for lots and lots of pollinators um, including moths. So there's a study come out recently which demonstrates just how much um, pollinating moths do do. So do think about moths too when you plant your garden especially if you want to try and encourage them if you're interested to see a few more. I hope I've been able to show you a little bit of the um, excitement and, and intricacy of moth trapping and I really, really encourage you to have a go. So think about why you want to get involved in moth trapping. Well, there's obviously the scientific side of it, so you can help. So if you submit your records of moths that you find in your garden or local park, once it's safe to do that a little bit more, you can add to our understanding of local biodiversity, which adds to the understanding of, of what moths are living where across the UK, which is a really, really, really important indicator of how species are spreading as the temperature perhaps warms up a little bit in some places. Um, and there are moth recorders all over the UK contributing their records to help with that research. Um, one of the reasons I got involved in it is because moths are just really cool. And I honestly, I can't say it enough times, I had no idea what moths were like until I really, really started looking. And I think that's the thing with any sort of wildlife recording, isn't it? It's just to really look, look and look again and you'll see absolutely amazing things. So I'm gonna finish just showing you these two little beauties. And these both turned up in my trap last night. One of them was outside the trap and I only just found it about 10 minutes ago, hanging on a, um, a strand of poppy, which was rather beautiful near one of the moth traps. So these are buff tip moths and they're about the size of my little finger. One's a bit bigger than the other, can you see? And that's a female. So we've got a male and a female. So who knows, after dark tonight when I release them, these two might start producing the next generation. What a brilliant thought. 